Well, hello everyone. I'm Carla from Honey Crumb Cake Studio. Welcome back to our channel. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make a cafe au lait dahlia out of sugar. It is an absolutely gorgeous flower, but it is one of the more challenging and advanced projects in sugar. So we're going to break this one up into three parts for you. This is part one. Let's get started. I'm using Ivory and Dusty Rose by Maricolor to dye my gum paste into a sort of a peachy, dusty pink color. We're going to make the flower center by bending a hook into an 18 gauge wire. As you can see here, I'm going to pre-drill a hole with a pair of scissors into a 3 quarter inch styrofoam ball. You can put a bead of hot glue into the hole or a little ball of gum paste and then insert your wire. We're going to start adding petals to our flower center. So you'll need a daisy cutter, a Dresden tool, a bone tool, a ball tool, a rolling pin, some cornstarch to prevent sticking, some water or egg whites as your glue, and a cup to keep your paste from drying out when you're not using it. I'm taking that dusty peach base color and blending it 50-50 with white gum paste just to lighten the base color a little bit. I'm using some cornstarch on my cell board here and rolling out the paste. Also using a pin as needed to pop out any air bubbles that show up. If you're using a pasta attachment on your KitchenAid mixer to roll out your gum paste, you'll want to roll this to the setting number four. I'm going to use this six petal daisy cutter to cut out four sets. So that essentially is 24 total petals, although we are going to be cutting these each individually in half, which I'll get to. This cutter is two inches wide. You can use any size cutter that's between an inch and a half and three inches and it will work for this. You want to thin out the petals and just stretch them out a little bit using your bone tool or your dog bone tool. Now take a pair of fine scissors, I'm using embroidery scissors here, and cut each of those six petals in half. Then use the very skinny, the extra sharp end of your Dresden tool to drag each one of these tiny petals from the outside in. And then I'm using water, you could use egg whites or edible glue, just to paint along the length of each of those skinny petals and then of course in the center of the petal set as well. Poke it in the center with your central wire and then coax each of those skinny little dahlia petals up over the top of the styrofoam ball. So ultimately you want them all to meet at the top in the center of the ball. I actually ended up breaking off some of these petals, tearing them off to get them to line up at the top. You're going to do exactly the same thing to the next three sets of petals. So stretching them out with your dog bone tool or with your ball tool, cutting them down the center with your embroidery scissors, and then using your Dresden tool to drag each petal from the outside edge inward to get it to curl toward itself. And that way you're creating the very distinctive look of those pointy slender petals that are usually gathered right up and bunched right up in the center of a dahlia bud or a dahlia flower. So that's my second set added. And here I am adding my third set. Patience is a virtue when it comes to making dahlias. And by the time you get to your fourth set, as you see here, you will already have a very promising and very intricate looking center for your dahlia. For best results, I would recommend leaving that center to dry overnight at that stage. Then you can move on to making the first row of what I call the outer petals. Again, I'm adding white gum paste to my base color uh, just to get an even lighter shade than the shade we used for the very center of the flower. That way the flower is going to have a really lovely gradient and will slowly get lighter toward the outermost petals. And that won't require as much dust, as much petal dust later. So this is a three inch wide sunflower cutter. This one's by Wilton. You can use any brand of cutter that has 12 or even 10 long slender pointy petals like this. 
I'm cutting out two sets and for ease, in order to make it easier to manipulate and shape these petals, I'm going to cut that set of 12 petals into four sets of three. So I'm just cutting it into quarters. As always, any pieces of gum paste that you're not working on right away, you want to keep those under plastic. So I put mine into a Ziploc bag. You can use a Stay Fresh mat or just two sheets of cling wrap folded on each other as your Stay Fresh situation. I am here using my dog bone tool to stretch out the petals and then using my Dresden tool dragged on either side of each of those long slender petals to create some shape and some lift. Here is a little closer up version. Once you've done that, you'll want to flip them over onto their fronts and then use the very sharp slender end of your Dresden tool to drag some veins into the center of each of those petals. So I'm just texturizing here. This is an optional step. This is for those who are very obsessive and very detail oriented. You really don't have to do this because this part is not as visible at this stage in the flower. But if you want to pinch the base of each petal and make them look more individually differentiated, go ahead and do that with your tweezers. And then use your water or your egg whites or your edible glue just to paint those at the base. So you want to add all four of those sections from the first petal set of 12 petals that you cut up into quarters onto your flower center as the first row of outer petals. And as you can see here, they are a little bit lighter in color than the ones we originally added, so the gradient is already starting to happen. You can bend a hook into your wire and hang it upside down in between as you work on the next petals. I, of course, decided that my daisy cutter, my sunflower cutter, was too pointy, and so I went and took a pair of scissors and rounded out my petals. You, of course, don't have to do that. It depends on the shape of the cutter, honestly, that you have. Once you've added all four of those quarters, You'll see there the flower is looking a little fuller. We're now going to add that next set of sunflower petals. So this is a set of 12. If you feel confident about how quickly you can work and your ability to shape each petal without having them dry out too quickly, you can keep the set intact. Otherwise, as before, feel free to cut it up into four sections to make it easier on you and then keep the other sections under plastic in between. I'm using water, you can use egg whites per usual as glue, and just threading that set on behind the first set that we added, and then just sticking those petals on. I did add glue up the length of each of those long slender petals, though of course you don't want them to crowd right up against the set that we just added. So one thing you can do is take a Dresden tool or take a paintbrush handle or something and just create a little air gap between that row and the row that sits before it. Bend a hook in your wire, hang it upside down, and now we're going to add more white gum paste to the shade we just used to create an even paler shade. I'm keeping the paste pretty thick for this part, so if you're using a pasta attachment, you don't want to go beyond a level 3. I'm switching back to the two inch wide daisy petal cutter that we used for the very first sets of petals that we added to our flower. Furthermore, we're going to cut each petal set into individual petals and work on them individually. This can get pretty sticky. Of course, I was making this flower on a particularly humid and drizzly day in Seattle, so of course it was getting super sticky for me. If that happens to you, just use extra cornstarch and have a little bit of patience with yourself and with the paste. And you'll want to drag a Dresden tool down either side of that slender pointy petal and then paint a little edible glue or water just at the very base. Now you're going to overlap the two bottom edges. You're just folding them over onto themselves and then rolling the petal gently between your fingers. I am using my Dresden tool here just to help me coax those petals into shape to fold those edges over onto themselves. I'm also using my scissors to trim any sections that are a bit ragged that I don't like. 
If you've ever seen a Dahlia close-up in person or you've looked in detail at photos of them online, you will notice that they do have this very particular characteristic of these rolled up petals, especially as they really bloom and start opening up. So if you can achieve that in sugar, you will end up with a flower that is botanically correct and really does fool the eye very well. So once you've rolled up your petals, you'll want to start adding them to your center. Notice carefully here that I am attaching them to the center in such a way that they sit higher than the other petal rows that came before. So we're creating the illusion that the dahlia is blooming upward and outward by making these petals sit higher. Also, they're a little paler in color, so that gradient is really starting to work beautifully. And remember, you made three sets of six, so that's 18 petals total. So just keep adding them until you get to this point, and then let that dry overnight. And that is where we're gonna stop for now. So in part two, we're gonna make all the wired outer petals. We're also gonna make the leaves, and we're gonna assemble the dahlia. And then in part three, I'm gonna show you some dusting techniques and how to paint and assemble the leaf sprays and put the whole thing together. So thank you guys so much for watching. We will catch you for part two very soon. And meanwhile, hopefully for some of the other sugar flower and baking tutorials on our channel. We'll see you soon. Cheers.